Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome in to another episode of the RTI and VR2 Recruiting Podcast. I am Nathaniel Rutherford, the Managing Editor of RockyTopInsider.com, joined for this episode only by Matt Ray of VR2. No Brandon Martin with us this week. He'll hopefully be back with us next week when we do at least one podcast, maybe two. We'll, we'll kind of keep you on the loop of that with, with the early sign period coming up soon. We'll probably start to churn these out a little more, uh, not just consistently, but also a little more often because... Um, there's going to be news and notes happening a lot more frequently now. We'll probably do next week too because next week is going to be a big recruiting visitor weekend for Tennessee, Matt. So we'll, we'll probably have a little bit more stuff as well. I know you guys definitely will over at VR2. We'll get to all that. You'll know, probably more next week. This week we've got a couple of things we want to focus on um, here in this episode of the RTI and VR2 recruiting podcast. First thing, Matt, I won't spend a whole lot of time on this one, but some basketball news. Tennessee on a Friday, just a few hours here earlier as we were recording this podcast, Tennessee picked up a commitment in the 2020 class from Santiago Vescovi. He is a four-star point guard out of Uruguay who has uh, really caught attention at one of the, I think it's a big NBA camp or an NBA kind of school thing that's in Australia. He got attention over the summer. He is an exceptional ball handler. Um, if, if the name that immediately sprung to my mind watching his film, and it's not just because they are both international point guards, but go watch his film. Go to RockyTopInsider.com and check out our impact report and also just our piece on him committing, and you'll see what I mean. He reminds me a lot of Ricky Rubio, just the, just the amount of elite ball handling skills, the way he passes the ball and distributes it and just makes some incredible passes. He's also a guy that can drive in the lane. Um, he's not afraid to make you know to pick up contact. He's not a finesse player by any means. He, he'll 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 draw contact and try to finish up the rim. He can sky for dunks, which is very impressive to me. He's got some really good hops that are I think that really um, impressed me more than one of the things that really stood out to me. You know, besides his ball handling, was his ability to leap. Um, he, he's six foot two. He can jump really high and, and can dunk a ball um, pretty easily. And also, Matt, there's the the fact that he can apparently be able to enroll for next semester and join this team for this season. I, I don't know how much he'll be able to play really for, you know, with, with the, what Tennessee's roster depth looks like right now in the backcourt with, you know, two seniors, Josiah Jordan James as a, as a potential ball handler as well. But the fact that he's slated to take the SAT in December and there's the thought that he, a really prevailing thought now that he would be able to come in and enroll for next semester for Tennessee and be able to play, you know, essentially kind of the SEC schedule and into tournament time. I don't, you know, I know Tennessee maybe needs some bigs a little bit at this point, but I think that's huge. I, I think getting another ball handler to get Lamonte Turner off into the more of a two-guard yeah, role like so he does too. and everything like that. I, I think, you know, Turner and, and James are comfortable as a point guard, but to me, they're not, it, what's not their natural position, whereas this guy, this, this is his natural position. I think he is a phenomenal ball handler too. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think you know it it gets a little bit more of a rotation. It, it gets Lamonte Turner to a more natural spot. Gets him a little bit more rest. You know, he's nursing that shoulder injury. I think this is a huge pickup for Tennessee, getting him eligible. Um, you know, it'll take a little while to transition to that game, but man, this team's going to be kind of exciting to watch. They're a little bit guard heavy, but mm -hmm. um, you know, still fighting to get Euros Plastic um, eligible. Who knows what's going to happen there? Um, but it's going to be you know, interesting to see, but you know, it's a really big pickup for Rick Barnes. Any way you want to look at it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll end up getting to see, uh, Roche project this season. Who, who knows? Ben McKee and I talked about that in our the regular RTI podcast. If you all want to go check that out. Um, it'll be, you know, if you're forgetting this podcast onto your phone, or everything like that, or, or wherever you're listening, you should be able to easily find that it's on YouTube. It's on our site. It's on our, um, I, Apple Podcast and Android devices, it's all on there. So just like just like where this one will be, if, if you're listening to this one, the regular RTI podcast can be found um, just as easily on all the other devices as well. Actually, Matt, before we get into some more recruiting stuff, I want you, I think last podcast you were able to kind of plug, and that was the, the first day of your new site and stuff. I want you to kind of plug some of the stuff you're doing because um, we'll get to obviously some football recruiting here in just a second, but I, I want you to plug what VR2 has going on because I know you all have not only a new site, but you've got a lot of new stuff you're doing with, that's how you get a new podcast coming out. Let, let, our, let listeners here know who, you know, enjoy your all stuff and stuff you do. Let them know where they can get some more VR2 content. Yeah, so, um, you know, we got the new site. I mentioned it on the last podcast, and that's just a rebrand to, to try to take, you know, a centralized focus off of recruiting. You know, I'm not going to 
change our recruiting coverage any obviously because that's what's helped us get to where we are today but you know we're going to have brandon he's going to be covering the teams a little bit more we have a couple of new team riders that i hired in um, you know still have the same recruiting tactics in place but you know over at vr2.site you know just a lot better user interface with the website you know a lot more mobile friendly our premium content is over there now you know you can sign mm-hmm. up for that much easier than, than going back and forth between two websites um you know our insider notebook is something that was you know our biggest hit for premium users that's there you know that's just a collection of usually four or five pages of you know intel that we gather about anything during the week mostly firsthand from recruits or from sources very close to recruitments you know i'm trying not to label it as a recruiting notebook anymore but you know that's a good bit of the the coverage in there um you know a weekly a weekly chat that's very easy to get into and out of that we cover everything that you want to talk about any any question is is it within limits so we had a we had a good chat last night um you know the podcast you know i'm doing one uh with with garen covington who's you know a younger guy on staff that we're just covering Tennessee athletics a little bit from top to bottom, about a 25 minute episode, generally looking at the basketball game, uh, games that are going on, you know, lady Vols, the football team. Um, we're running a sponsor with, um, with my bookie right now, um, for the time being, uh, see how that goes. And I'm, I'm releasing five betting lines right now. One for one, uh, nailed Georgia tech to win outright last night. They would have won outright and covered obviously, cause they were an underdog, but, um, nailed them, nailed that money line last night. So, nice. you know, just, just some fun stuff. Brandon and David are doing an around the South podcast that focuses a little bit more on, uh, two sports with, with the sec and basketball and football, but, an emphasis on Tennessee, but highlighting some other stuff to keep, you know, listeners engaged. So just check all that out. It's all on the site. Our RSS feeds there. Um, my next thing with the site, which is probably coming this weekend is to move a, move a page over, which would be relatively easy. I just haven't had time to, to set up a page that'll have all the podcasts that we've done with Nathaniel and RTI that they're all, they'll all come over and we'll have a spot for Nathaniel's podcast as well with Ben. So, you know, that's going to be there. You're going to have everything that you need to, to check us out. So just get over there and check it out again. It's vr two dot sot. Yeah, and, and, and summation as you said there. If if you didn't catch everything he's talked about that they have, just check out vr two dot site and you'll be able to see everything. Yeah. It's, it's 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 like you mentioned before. It's a much more streamlined site. It looks really good. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's much nicer than yeah. what we had before. Yeah, it's it's really nice. And if you check them out, check us out. We are all you know a big partner group here. Rocket Top Insider and VR2. So check us all out, rockettopinsider.com, vr2.site. Well, Matt, let's get into the recruiting talk here. We touched on basketball. Let's get into some football stuff here, where I assume most people are tuning into the podcast is to, to hear about the football stuff. We're off the top of the bat here. Let's talk about Vi Cajo, who is a Nevada linebacker commit. May not you know sound too flashy when you're talking about Tennessee and comparing Tennessee to, to Nevada and, and recruiting and, and everything, but... Vicajo has been committed to Nevada since uh, late April of this year. He's going to be coming in on a visit for the Vanderbilt game, which is turning out to be a huge weekend for Tennessee and, 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 you know, in terms of getting visitors and stuff in here um, in Knoxville. Matt, this guy, from everything we've, you know, are talking before we hit record here, from everything we've been told, from what we've looked into um, on this kid, Vicajo has really risen up tennessee's recruiting board um it, it, he he's a linebacker he's about a six foot six foot one 209 inside 209 pound inside linebacker from reno nevada he's a very low three star on the you know on the rankings but that doesn't we as we've seen before that doesn't necessarily mean anything uh, for tennessee plays over at bishop Monago, i think say how to say the school's name i'm not sure i but think he's, so yeah he's over in nevada which is obviously the same state where tennessee's got another big time target uh, with Darnell Washington, I don't think these two are. You know, I don't know if these guys are best friends no, or like that. So. But yeah, I don't. I don't think it's going to help Tennessee with Darnell. I think they just genuinely really like what Vi brings to the table. So you know, share some of your thoughts on that and and just kind of the the latest on where things stand with him because it it you were talking about some interesting info before we hit record here about just you know we think Tennessee is very very high on this kid. Yeah, absolutely. Tennessee Tennessee seems to be very very high on this kid right now. Um, you know, even indicating that if he pops, that he'll be the last linebacker that they take inside, and and that's very interesting. 
um, think he'll have the opportunity to do that this this upcoming weekend against Vanderbilt, which I think that'll be a go home and decide decision for him. I don't think he'll do anything rash. I don't. It, it's just not the type of kid he is. I spent a a good bit of time on the phone with him. We did an interview that was released last maybe this week, um, within the last week. Um, but spent a good bit of time with him on the phone after the interview just because he wanted to talk and we you know we talked about a lot of different things he's he's a very um he's a very faithful kid you know he's put a lot of this um you know in in a lot of this process in into that belief system that he has um he's really interested in Tennessee has a previous relationship with Jeremy Pruitt but the thing about the thing about uh Vakeho is that he can play all three levels of the field as a linebacker. He he's really he's really a phenomenal athlete in my opinion. If you look at his film, you know you're you're going why isn't this kid rated any higher? You know he's done some camps and he has pretty good numbers, um, which which I have been impressed with. His brother was actually the number one linebacker in the country coming out of the 2018 cycle and a guy that Jeremy Pruitt and Brian Niedermeyer both recruited when they were at Alabama. So, you know, they they have a relationship with this family. They've been around this family. Um, you know, and, and Va is another guy that they really think could make an impact. You know, a guy that's around two bounce between 205, 210 pounds, has over a 37-inch vertical, can move moves very well laterally. It's it's really a surprise that some other teams haven't got involved, but you know Mel Tucker has been on on Vox since yes. he since he got to Colorado, and that tells me right there all I need to know. Um, yeah, Jeremy Pruitt and Mel Tucker are two of the best defensive minds in college football, and if you've got these two guys that are prioritizing a linebacker and really getting ready to battle over him because it, it kind of feels like Nevada's not going to hold on to him. They you know, they were obviously an easy choice at the time, but Tennessee and Nevada or Tennessee and Colorado are going to get the last two visits. They're both going to go in home, of course Nevada will too, but it's it seems like it's going to be Tennessee and Colorado and man, if, if those two coaches are battling over you, I don't think there's anything else that you need to know. Um, mm -hmm. When you look at when you look at what they've had, when you look at what uh, Jeremy Pruitt's done in two years with the Tennessee linebacking core, um, you know Mel Tucker had Roquan Smith at at Georgia. He also had you know some of the guys that are on the roster there now that that are really stud linebackers. So I think Caho is is a guy that has that potential. So. I think it's the versatility at this point. I think Tennessee's going to take whoever's um, the best available, and I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to pass up on this kid if they get the opportunity. Yeah, his brother. I, I assume his first name is pronounced Ale. It's A L E. Uh, Ale Caho plays yeah. over at uh, Alabama, as you mentioned. He's not had a chance to play a ton on defense yet because, as we all know, you know, Bama's got pretty good depth. But he's been a special teams. Um, he's been a special teams fiend this year for them. He's blocked two kicks. One against Ole Miss, one against Texas A&M. He returned the one he blocked against Ole Miss for a touchdown. Um, against South Carolina, he had four tackles and tackle for loss in that game. So he, he's he's not played a ton, but when he's been on the field, um, he's been a pretty good difference maker, especially on special teams uh, for Alabama. And, and as you said, he was a high-rated kid. He was a top 40 overall prospect. I think he was the last five-star that the 207 Sports gave out um, in that 2018 class. So he's got a good brother, a really good, uh, a really good uh, brother, Alabama. I, I think he's an interesting one, Matt. If you had to, if you had to, uh, I guess bet on it right now, who ends up in Tennessee's class? Will it be Vi Cajo or will it be Desmond Tisdall? Because I, as we talked about, I think last podcast, uh, or if it wasn't last podcast, it's come out since then that Tennessee is looking, I think, definitely at Lynette Whitehead as more of a running back than linebacker. A running back, yeah. Yeah, Tisdall, Tisdall is more the linebacker. Cajo is obviously a linebacker. Who do you think ends up being part of Tennessee's class? Because if they weren't taking one, you know, I don't. We've seen Tisdall put out a ton of Tennessee stuff on his social media over the last few weeks. It seems like that one's kind of a maybe a matter of time. But also, he does definitely seem to be. Um, they still waiting. visit. Yeah, They're still visiting. Still kind of maybe waiting on Auburn. So if you had to bet on it, Tisdall or Caho, which one ends up in Tennessee's class? Man, if I was betting right now, that's that's really tough. But if I was betting, I would say T. 
Tisdall just for the set for the simple fact that Caho ha- hasn't been out here yet. He's still got to come out. He's got to see everything. You know, most of the time kids are blown away. Um, you know, when you look at his recruitment, he, it's probably going to be the best facilities that he's that he's been to. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's an SEC program. I think there's a chance that he's going to really sit down and evaluate it. But you know, maybe it only takes three days with your family out here to say, yeah, that's home. He's got a brother that's in Alabama. So it's not, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I'm going to say Tisdall right now, but man, I wouldn't rule out, I wouldn't rule out Kaho. I, I really believe it's going to be just whoever pops first. That, that's where I'm at. I think it's going to be whoever, whoever pulls the trigger first is going to get that spot. It's interesting to me because you've got Tisdall expected or, you know, going to be taking his official visit to Tennessee on December 13th, which is right around when he's supposed to be making the announcement, or, or I think right around yeah. the early signing period. So it's just like, what if what if Caho commits to Tennessee soon? I, I don't know that he will. I mean, oh, we don't have any inside information about that, obviously. But what if he commits to right. Tennessee when he comes visit against Vanderbilt? Does Tisdale, you know, does he cancel his OV to Tennessee? I, I think that's going to be interesting to me is this visit when he comes to Vanderbilt game for Caho, what happens there? If, if we see Tisdall, uh cancel his OV before there's any kind of public announcement, that, that should probably tell you all you, you need to know there. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, and the real thing about Caho is, is that Jeremy Pruitt's handling the recruitment and, and that's another, that's another big sign. You know, you saw him go to Whitehaven. You saw him start handling that recruitment. You saw what happened. Um, you know, Tennessee was recruiting Tyson Helton was recruiting Harrison Bailey for a few months and Tennessee started to fade and then Jeremy Pruitt took the recruitment over you still hear Harrison Bailey and his dad today um, his dad especially talk about how um, how big that relationship with Jeremy Pruitt is and how they all still talk every single night um, for an extended period of time so you know if Jeremy Pruitt wants you, you, people seem to forget, even though he's a head coach and he does it, he can't get out on the road as much. He can't go in home as much. He's a, he's an exceptional recruiter. So um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it absolutely will. Uh, to move along here to talk about an athlete, that is a very interesting prospect on Tennessee's board. One that I think we touched on a, a couple weeks ago when he got the special offer that he got. But that is D. Beckwith, Demarcus Beckwith, um, who is an athlete, 6'5", 220, or 215 down in Alabama, a borderline four-star. He's, he's right around a four-star, three-star prospect out of Alabama who seems to still kind of be wanting um, to maybe play basketball in, in, in college. Yeah. Have, at least have an option to play both. Tennessee gave him, extended him an offer to play both basketball and football um, you know, earlier this month. And then he also... I think within the next couple of days, yeah, on November 6th, he, he tweeted out that he got offered to play both sports at the University of Tennessee. He already had a football offer, but he picked up the basketball one. And then the next day, um, Ole Miss did the same thing. So he has offers from, I think, now three different SEC schools who say, hey, you can come in here and have an offer for both basketball and football because obviously he has that from Florida as well. So, Matt, what's the latest on D. Beckwith? It, it, that's one that I think is an interesting prospect to discuss because he just it, it, he's an interesting one to keep an eye on because I don't I, I think he's a good basketball player. I don't know that he's SEC good, and I don't know it's it's very difficult nowadays to play both sports with with how involved the football coaches want you to be uh, with, yeah. with the team as a football player. It's it's very hard to play both, and I I think he's going to have to make a decision on, you know, does he want to play at a high-level SEC football program or does he want to play basketball at a, you know, probably a more of a mid-major school? While well, these these schools have offered him a basketball scholarship or, you know, the opportunity to play basketball, I think with push comes to shove, you know, I think Jeremy Pruitt would say to Rick Barnes, hey, you know, we'd rather have this kid or, you know, I, I think Mike White would say to Dan Mullen, hey, or the other way around, Dan Mullen would say to Mike White, hey, we would rather have this kid. Uh, we're going to do what we can to keep him away from the basketball team. So what do you make of this situation um, of D Beck with. Right. Yeah. You know, talk, talk to D earlier in the week. I want to say on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, um, he, he, make no bones about it. D, dating back to July, D Beck with told me that basketball is his true love. I mean, he, he, he's so much more, he, he enjoys football. Don't get me wrong. He's good at football. I mean, obviously he's, he's very good at football. Um, you know, he, he was so much more chattier this time, enthusiastic, talking about basketball a little bit. Um, Tennessee's really starting to make a late push for D. Um, communication was there for a while, 
but you know it's almost got that mark of a of a will friend recruitment and and friends handled a lot of that i think he's the area recruiter um where where beck was at um his friend and cheney handle on the recruitment now but it's quiet it's it's a quiet recruitment you never know you never know who's coming who's going with him you know but i think i think will friend's doing a really good job jim cheney's you know reiterating that they can use him in multiple ways and want to want to use him as a wildcat quarterback uh, wide receiver and a receiving tight end I'm, I'm interested in the receiving tight end aspect i I don't know if his frame can hold what they would need him to. Um, you know, I, maybe it can, maybe it can't. I, I don't see him being able to get enough reps as just a receiving tight end. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, the basketball side of things, I, I've watched minimal film. I don't I don't analyze a whole lot of basketball film. Um, but he's a good he's a good basketball player. I think, I think the best offer that he's actually got as far as what I'm going to say is a, a true committable basketball offer to go there and play full-time basketball is UAB maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think Florida and, and Tennessee, I think those are and and Ole Miss. I think those are genuine offers, but at the end of the day, Trayvon Flowers is supposed to be playing base, playing baseball at Tennessee too. <laughs> um, I, I think if you're going to do that, I think I think baseball is the the sport that it's more feasible to do that in. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're going to do that, you have to be like you know like a Kyler Murray type guy or how Russell Wilson was back in mm-hmm. college. Guys, guys that can go out, pick the bat up or pick the ball up, and just play. And, and are just phenomenal, you know. Just it's just superstars. I mean, I mean, all in all, superstars. I'm not sure that D is is an SEC basketball superstar. You know, obviously comes from a family with Lamonte Turner being his cousin, a guy that yep. can play, a guy that's gritty. Um, you know, he has really good hops. He, he he can shoot. You can shoot the mid range shot. But you know, I, I don't. I'm not seeing him over the next couple of years. Being able to come in and play and contribute at that two or three spot for Tennessee, where they're telling him that he would play. You know, he hasn't saw the basketball facilities here. He hasn't come up. He hasn't went through all that. He's been through that at Florida and Ole Miss. You know what he told me. Enjoyed it there. Really enjoyed basketball at Florida. And Florida offered him both at the same time and and come on and made him a priority. Um, Going to take this until February. Right now is the plan. Probably take those official visits. Maybe even after the majority of them after the first signing period. I, I'm not sure how he's going to try to fit those in, but an opportunity he he wants to he wants to go up for football and be able to see a basketball game on the same weekend. So he's going to try to make those work. May have to miss some some days from schools to get some in during the week, but he's going to make it work. I, I like Tennessee's chances with him. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I think Florida's going to make a push. I think it's going to really come down to Tennessee and Florida, though. If I'm him, if it comes down to Tennessee and Florida, and if you're really looking at basketball, um, I don't know how you choose Mike White over Rick Barnes, <laughs> it's not, especially with where this season's going for Florida so far. I know. Like, yeah, Florida I don't gets, Florida gets the talent in there. It just I don't think Mike White's a very good developer of talent. So I, I think that, like, as you mentioned, I think Tennessee and Florida is what it'll come down to. Um, I'll be intrigued to see if someone else kind of jumps in the boat there, but he's he's a guy who's got offers from um, you know a, a bunch of SEC schools, Auburn, Kentucky, or two other ones besides Ole Miss and Tennessee, uh, and Florida. That's offered yeah. him. He's got he's actually got some from teams like uh, Mississippi State, South Carolina, but Michigan, Nebraska. Those are teams that have offered him as well. So it's going to be he he'll be a very intriguing one to um, to keep an eye on. Matt, before we get into a question that was actually asked on Twitter, we do, this isn't you know a, a mailbag podcast, but there was a question that I, I saw that we got actually asked on uh, for RTI for, for our RTI mailbag instead of mailing that I wanted to touch on on here. But before we get to that, I had something just occur to me that I wanted to get your opinion on, Matt. Jimmy Callaway, Tennessee's yep. four-star receiver commit. I guess technically an athlete, but he's going to project as a receiver and probably play at receiver at Tennessee, assuming he comes to Tennessee because. He's been getting a ton of attention from schools, um, that a lot of different schools, Oklahoma being one of them, and, and now especially Kentucky. Matt, he's going to be taking another visit to Kentucky for the second 
straight, or he's going to be visiting Kentucky in two weeks in a row. Yep. That, to me, I know you all interviewed him. Obviously, Brandon got to have a, a, a face-to-face interview with him um, after a game. I know, obviously, that he talked about he's, he's still committed to Tennessee and that he seemed like he was, you know, he's obviously going to take visits and stuff, but he seemed still like he was still pretty solid. But to me, going to Kentucky for back-to-back weeks, that's um, that's a little concerning. If, if I'm a, I'm a, if I'm a yeah. ball fan or a ball coach, i got to say, well, no, hold on a minute here. What, what's going on with with Callaway right now? So th- let's let's talk about him for a little bit. Should we be on maybe not this weekend or next weekend, but should we be on a, a, at some point a a flip watch for Jimmy Callaway? Oh yeah, I think I think Jimmy Callaway has been on a flip watch for a little while. He's still you know entertaining all the offers that are out there. Um, can he, oh, I don't remember what he told the Kentucky reporter that time about three months ago. Oh, like he was yeah. like fifty percent committed, some some lower number. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, maybe like 80, I don't know, somewhere below a, below ninety percent. It wasn't. It wasn't one hundred percent. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. So, um, I think Kentucky has been the team that he has always shied away from during the interview process. But you see him continue to go to Kentucky, continue to make plans for Kentucky. I think Kentucky's the biggest threat. I also think Oklahoma's looming. He's yeah. going to go out there. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, he also taken his mom. He he was going to an Alabama game. I don't know if he made that trip. I was never able to confirm with him. It was taking his mom to the Alabama game just so she could go see the stadium. So, you know, some kids really enjoy the process. Is, is Jimmy enjoying the process? Um, did he did he go up and get a chance to watch Tennessee play last week? And now he's just going to say, well, you know, Kentucky's going to host me for an official visit. Uh, let's let's go back up here and you know see what happens. I think it's a little bit concerning. I think Mark Stoops can sell him on a whole lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously their plan is not to run that the offense that they're running right now. Um, they're right, they're yeah. <laughs> they're going to go back to a real offense. But you know, Jimmy Callaway plays um, Wildcat quarterback and. It's pretty much the offense down in Morrow. So, you know, you go up there, you see Lynn Bowden doing the way that he does. Maybe they sell Jimmy Callaway on some packages like that as well as playing, you know, slot or some schools are recruiting him as a cornerback, which is where Oklahoma's recruiting. You know, give him a lot of different options. I think Tennessee's going to be fine. Um, they'll get a chance to host him again. But, man, I, I, it's going to get interesting. He's, he's one of those recruitments. He's one of those Atlanta area – Atlanta area kids that you never know what's going to happen, and it's always going to be so fun to watch. You know, there's there's a couple of them every cycle. Um, he's just right right in the same location as Jaden Hazelwood down there, um, you know, relatively close. So you know, Hazelwood's recruitment was like that. You never knew where he was going. Uh, so Jimmy Jimmy's going to be the same way, I think. But it, he's been committed to Tennessee for a long time. I do think it'll take a lot to get him to back off of that but when he when he does who knows what happens so or if he does i was just say when yeah. he does if he does yeah he's he's one of the more intriguing names in tennessee's class right now he, there, there aren't many guys so i look at on in tennessee's committed list right now that i would say hey maybe we should watch out for him to go somewhere else but i think he is probably the top one that i would circle as far as we need yeah. to keep an eye on Jimmy Jamar Butler is going to be visiting other elsewhere, so I think he's a guy to keep an eye on. It doesn't seem like I think Art Green is still obviously committed to Tennessee, but it doesn't seem like we've heard a whole lot about Art Green, um, and I don't think he's going to go anywhere. But I think he's a name to keep an eye on. Mordecai McDaniel, we touched on I think him uh, last podcast too about he's you know getting interest and stuff from Florida and a few different schools, so he he he'll be one to watch. But I still think he sticks with Tennessee too. Yeah, when I talked with Art after his official visit, which was um uh in October maybe about a month ago he wasn't planning to use any more official visits now okay. he, he did he did say that could change mm-hmm. um, obviously you know if it was me and I tell people this all the time I would take all five <laughs> <laughs> yeah 100% I would, I would take all five you know our, our brought his mom his dad and his sister to Tennessee for three days you're put up nice. You're getting to experience football, a game that you love. I, I would take all five Dale. A guy on our staff says I would go. He said, I don't care where I was going. He said, I wouldn't even use one to the school I was going to if I'd visited enough to commit there. Um, he said, I'd go to USC. I'd go to Hawaii. I'd go to Miami. I'd go somewhere up north. And he said, then I might use the one that's at the school I'm going to. He said, but I would see all the places that I want to see. But, you know, I, I would at least go see all the schools that – 
have piqued my interest at some point. You know, you never know. So um, it, it's a paid trip. It's different than an unofficial visit. But right now, Art is saying that he's not going to take any more official visits. So that's really good. Yeah, and, and just kind of scanning through his Twitter, he's still got, I mean, his bio is still talking about being committed. His his profile picture is still him in UT gear. His header is still in UT stuff. He's still got his committed tweet pinned. He's he's retweet, retweeting stuff from Tennessee every once in a while. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think Art's pretty solidly in the fold for Tennessee. And like you said, if yeah. he visits anywhere else, um, I think he's good. Well, Matt, to kind of finish up the podcast here and talking about receivers and stuff there through me, Callaway, I think that that kind of transitions well into this question Michael Johnson on Twitter who's at MJ82TN had sent the question to us at Rocky Top Insider for our mailbag but I, I didn't put it in mailbag because I thought it would be a good question to um, cover here on the RTI and VR2 recruiting podcast Michael says with LSU's success the Rakeem Jarrett flip seems out of the question so are there any other receivers that Tennessee's in on or have a chance to flip in this 2020 cycle. We talked about, uh, at least Brandon and I did, Darren Turner a, a couple different times, and it, it, I don't think Darren Turner is going to be an option for Tennessee. I just, I don't. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of mutual interest there or anything. But, Matt, there's still, with the receivers for Tennessee they have right now, we, we talked about Jimmy Callaway. If he stays in, that's that's big for Tennessee. He's a guy that they really like at receiver. Uh, obviously, Jalen Hyatt is phenomenal. He's going to get that fourth star all across the board. He has it on 247. He's going to get it on rivals. He'll get in the composite ranking. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what more, what more we could say about Hyatt. He's a, a an excellent prospect, an excellent receiver. Um, cannot say any, any more high praise for him. Darian, Will, Darian Williamson's another kind of intriguing name in Tennessee's class. I think he ends up on defense, but you know, he could play receiver. Um, assuming he sticks in the class, he obviously suffered a season-ending injury this year as, as a senior in high school, which that sucks for him. Um, I hate that for the kid. But Tennessee does still look like they're trying to add at least one more receiver. There's been an interesting wrinkle that I heard, I believe actually first it was Austin Price of VolQuest mentioned it. Um, you know, we don't obviously get to see a ton of practice in, in the media, but from behind closed doors, it does seem like D'Angelo Gibbs, who's, you know, sitting out this season after transferring from Georgia, seems like he's been turning heads and doing really good work um, as a scout team receiver for Tennessee. So I think maybe the staff feels a little more confident with Gibbs, you know, looking like he's flashing a lot of good potential receiver with Brandon Johnson redshirting and coming back next year. I don't think the need at receiver is as dire as it was, you know, at the beginning of the season where you weren't sure if Gibbs was going to stay on defense or go to offense. You, you didn't think Brandon Johnson was going to return next year. I don't think receivers as dire. So I don't know that Tennessee takes more than one receiver remaining. If they lose Callaway, they might try to take two. But at this point, I think there might just be one spot left for receiver. So Matt, with Rakeem Jarrett, as Michael said, seeming you know pretty much like that's a closed door. Where does Tennessee turn? I, I think obviously the one of the big names, the main names we'll, we'll mention here is Dayu Jones Bell, but that seems you know somewhat unlikely because it's just really hard to pull away Alabama commitment, especially when that kid is in Alabama. Uh, or actually, is he in Alabama or is he in Georgia? I've suddenly just forgot where he's. He's, a, he's at. Um, I'm sorry, he's in Florida at Miami. Okay. Never mind, he's in either of those. <laughs> Miami Palmetto, maybe. I Don't hold me to that. Okay. Um, they wear orange. I, I know that much. I've watched enough <laughs> he film. Is, I can't you're right. It is, it is uh, Miami Carroll City is the high school he plays. That's there. it. Miami yeah. Carroll City. Yeah. Yeah. So he's in, he's down in Florida, but it's hard to pull away Alabama commits. So besides Thayu Jones-Bell, that's obviously, like I said, the, the obvious name um, to throw around there. I, I think as we just talked about, Deep Beckwith could be an option as, as a receiver. He, he's just he's a just an interesting athlete to kind of see where you can kind of fit him in on the field. But aside from those two, I mean, is there any other name to really watch out for and, and keep an eye on at receiver for Tennessee? No, uh, I really don't think so. Um, I think you know I think it's going to be really hard to flip Thio Jones Bell. Um, obviously, you have a spot for Darnell Washington if it if it were available. But he's going to play wide receiver. He's going to play tight end. I think the other name there. Is is D back with um, mm -hmm. Tennessee still got to add, you know, the opportunity to add Octavius Oxendine, Tyler Barron, and Omari Thomas up front. So if you had all mm -hmm. three of those guys who they're battling for, um, and and probably leading for two out of three, if not all three right now, but you know, right there at the top, um, in a coin flip for maybe two of the three, but maybe leading for all, all three, um. You're at 21. Um, if Williamson stays in the class, numbers become a become a pretty big crunch. You know, I got another guy's name that's popped up. I think you'll see him on an official visit. Is Kendall Dennis um, mm -hmm. from from Lakeland, Florida? 
Um, you know, it's interesting to see what Tennessee's going to do. We talked about Alante Taylor moving back to wide receiver. If Tennessee elects to take another DB in Dennis, I think that's going to be pretty telling uh, um, as far as what Taylor could do. Um, but I think Gibbs stays at receiver, and, and yep. it's kind of forgot that Gibbs is one of the best athletes in the country coming out of high school and was, in my opinion, just as good a receiver, if not better, than a, than a defender. And you know, if you can't make it work as a defender, just get him the ball. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just just get him the ball. He's a bigger guy. Um, you know, close to two hundred pounds. You know, just got a little bit of that that dog mentality in him. Has always had that. So I don't think it's I don't think there's as big a need as there was at receiver. If you have the option to take another DB, if you think you can get him, you know. Tennessee's starting to load up on DBs anyways. You have an opportunity to move Alante Taylor, you know, back to a receiver, at least experiment with it early on. You can see what you can do. Can work the grad transfer market if you need to. Um, how, you obviously have the, you know, the late signing period when guys like Jordan Young and everybody else were discovered last time. So there, there's plenty of opportunities. Um, but right now, I, I think, the name is D Beckwith. That, that's just my opinion. I think the name's D Beckwith. If you hold on to Callaway or if you don't hold on to Callaway, I don't see him going out and trying to find another receiver. Now, Thaw Jones Bell's a take, obviously, mm-hmm. but I, I'm, I'm not sure that that one's going to happen. What about Kentron Portier? He's a guy I'd, I'd kind of forgotten about until I was just kind of scanning the receiver um, group that Tennessee's offered. And, and his name, he was one that kind of picked up some traction for a little bit. What, if, do you have anything on him? Uh, he's the kid from Miami Palmetto. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. You know that's a that's a bigger that's a bigger body receiver. Um. Six two, two hundred pounds. Um. Can can move. <sighs> he's been very quiet. I would like to see if Tennessee mm-hmm. gets him up for an official visit. If they do, um, it would have to be the last weekend for the signing period because I think he's going to Florida this weekend. But you know that's a that's a guy that fits the mold for what they like at wide receiver that big frame so if, if florida or florida state make a really big push you know depending on who florida state hires as a coach I, I think i think they'll be tough to beat but i think tennessee will have a shot in that one if they choose to um down the stretch well it's gonna be interesting because there's a few other names that I, i've thought about too kentron portier is one of them but it, maybe I, I don't know it doesn't seem like so at one point, it seemed like Tennessee was involved um, pretty heavily with a guy like Porter Rooks uh, before, obviously, he ended up committing to NC State. But now with NC State, I mean, it, I, I don't know how they, they keep Dave Doran at the helm there. It, it, it's, that NC State school, just it, they're not doing anything. You know, they're just kind of hitting their head against the wall. I, I don't know if maybe if they get rid of Dave Doran, does maybe Porter Rooks decommit? Does Tennessee try to get in? I, I don't think so off the top of my head, but I, I think Tennessee is receiving – um, their, their wide receiver recruiting is an interesting one to keep an eye on right now, as we mentioned, because they're, the spots you assume here soon are start or will be starting to get a little limited. But at the same time, I mean, you, if, you, if you get some good receivers wanting to come in, I mean, I think you take them. But I, I think Tennessee is probably only going to take maybe, maybe at most two more receivers in this class. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Well, Matt, I think that'll be where we end this episode of the RTI and VR2 Recruiting Podcast. We appreciate all of you who tuned in and listened to this episode. Next week, we'll at least bring you one. Um, We'll try to bring two because next week's going to be huge news for Tennessee recruiting because um, you'll have a bunch of visitors and stuff coming in for the weekend. So we'll try to do one earlier in the week, and then we'll try to do one later on the week, kind of when we know who all more is going to be coming in and everything, too. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. But for now, uh, we appreciate all of you who tuned in for this episode. Matt, I know you kind of plugged everything at the beginning of the episode, but if there's anything specifically you want to plug, if you guys are going to be anywhere um, and watching games and stuff here on Friday night, let our listeners know where they can kind of be on the lookout for you guys to be you know, getting some content. Yeah, um, so tonight we don't have a whole lot on tap tonight. You know, some nasty weather here around the south. But Dale, Dale Dowden is going to be at um, Macaulay and Innsworth for a – for a massive rematch there in the state semifinals. Um, Innsworth come down. Um, it was an early playoff game for them. They beat McCauley. Um, McCauley kind of got away from their normal rushing attack. I would expect to see Coach Potter go back to that tonight. Really pound it out with uh, D'Angelo Hardy and, and B.J. Harris and what should be a really good game. 
Uh, threw the ball a lot more against a secondary that's pretty much composed of Division One players. When you look around and see Keyshawn Lawrence and Andre Tarantine, who are both um, four stars in their classes, and Isaiah Horton, who's already stacking up major offers in the 2022 class. So it's pretty tough when you run the ball 70% of the time, I would say, and you're trying to throw against guys like that. But, um, you know, Coach, Coach Potter had the op- opportunity to work some stuff, and I think that's what he did. Um, and he – you know, it, it didn't affect their seating. It didn't affect anything like that. So, you know, it's going to be a fun game tonight. You know, so three guys in that. You know, Jay Hardy is obviously there. Not sure what Tennessee's doing. Not sure if Tennessee will. You know, I doubt they'll be there to see him again tonight. They weren't there last week, but you never know. So there, there's a lot of guys in that game. Um, Brandon is actually on the road, which is why he's not with us. But he uh, he could appear at the in the second half or late in the first half of the uh, White Haven Houston game, which is one of the bigger games in the state, you, you pretty much have to think whoever wins that game is going to the going to represent the West in six A. So um one of the best offenses in the state, regardless of class against probably the best defense in the state in White Haven. So Brandon Brandon will probably make an appearance there. Um and I'm gonna be at home working on some different stuff for the weekend and for the website. So um, we'll ha- we'll have a little bit of coverage. If it stops raining in Nashville, may have somebody out there. But you know, just tune in. And we'll keep you updated on what we do have. You can follow us, at Rocky Top Insider, on Twitter, RTI Recruiting on Twitter as well. You can give them a follow at underscore vr2 underscore. They're at vr2 dot site. We're at rockytopinsider.com. All of us, you can check us all out. VR2 for them on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're Rocky Top Insider on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube. We appreciate all of you listening in. This has been another episode of the RTI and VR2 Recruiting Podcast.